Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. It has been a long time since I've been gone live, but um, you know, I was having a conversation online with a fellow artist who was asking about how do you come up with different variations on colors, and I figured, you know what, if I'm going to do this painting and try and help her out, I might as well do it live and show off kind of the idea. So she's doing some sunflowers and hers is just two, so I've completely taken the design and gone bananas with it because we want to do a bunch of of color samples. So here we go. I'm just going to sketch this in with my chappie so you can actually see it. And we're doing, it's very, very simple, right? It's kind of like a, a cute whimsical style sunflower. And we're going bananas here, like, like crazy color samples and sunflowers on steroids. So don't worry, I'm not stealing her design. And again, almost just adding like little teardrop shapes to each of those. I sketched it out with um, a watercolor pencil. It's actually just a, a cheapy Liquitex, not Liquitex, who's an artist law from Michael's light purple. If I get this wet, it'll just kind of wash off, smear off. And purple is one of those semi-neutral colors that kind of just disappears. So I like it a little bit better than graphite. If I'm hand sketching a canvas. So again, you know, keeping it loose here. This is not meant to be professional and oh, you know, follow along and do the thing. This is really more about the color sample. So I'm just kind of Popping this flower in really quick, winging it yet again this week. What the heck? You know, I think I have been on a little hiatus from painting for a week or so due to so much going on at work, at home, at school, all those things that it's really fun to just kind of let loose and wing it. Okay, so there you go. Now we have like a basic design. So again, sunflower. Um, I'm going to worry about the middles later because first I want to do color combos. So now that we've got a basic design in place, here we have the color wheel. So if you're doing a regular sunflower, you're often kind of working in the yellow and orange zone uh, where the petals are kind of yellow with little orange tinges to them. But if you have painters who want to do something different, and this goes for pretty much anything, you know, you kind of want to look at the Oh, Sarah says, hey, how far? And I get to catch you live while cleaning my Jeep out in our barn. Yeah, I know this is going to be a little bit crazy. So we're talking kind of actually about a conversation that's going on amongst other artists and paint party people is how do you how do you change it up when you have paint party um, painters who don't want to do the standard thing? They're like, hey, I want to do my own color. So what do we do? So again, you first want to look at what is the standard? If the standard is orange and yellow next to each other, that's going to be your analogous. So maybe they want to change it up a little bit and you could just say, all right, well, what's next to yellow, yellow and green or orange and orangey red, you know? So you always want to pick kind of a combo that's side by side. So here we have kind of a ready, a deep red, like this is a, what is it? Tuscan red and kind of an orange. Here we have a magenta and red. So any of these would be really, really interesting. Uh, purple, cobalt, I'm kind of loving, sorry, I ripped this thing, I'm so sad. And if you want the full tutorial on this guy, I have it posted on YouTube for sure. And I think I probably also have it somewhere on Facebook, but I wouldn't know where because it was a couple of years ago. Um, but some of the interesting colors, at least for me, are going to be in this zone. Now, if you want to get really crazy, you could also go opposites. Now, I wouldn't necessarily go green and purple. That's a little funky or green and red because it feels like Christmas. But you could kind of do like a teal and orange, um, you know, uh, or a teal and kind of ready orange. You might even want to maybe just go kind of like skip two or three. Um, sometimes complementary color is going to be a little bit weird. You have people that, oh, so Sarah said or says, I love this. Because, um, yeah, people ask you to do, um, they don't want to do what everyone else is doing. Um, and it's, it's perfectly okay. But sometimes they then ask for advice. And you're like, well, how do I advise them? So I'm going to go, I'm going to have fun with this. So the colors I'm using, because I feel like I can get most colors out of them, I always, always, always have my daffodil yellow from Folk Art. I know a lot of talk here before we get going, but I want to make sure we set the stage. This color is phenomenal for mixing. Quinacrita and magenta, because that is the only way I'm going to really get some of these rich colors, just in case I can't quite get there. I also have ultraviolet, which is neon purple. I love my neons. So I also have hot pink and fluorescent red. And if you're like, oh my God, are you kidding me, Wendy? I, I like things more vibrant. And the combination of these three colors can pop anything out of the water like kind of crazy. So another um, really nice one is bluegrass green. 
Although, honestly, we should do this with mermaid tail teal since that's like my other standard. Let me grab it. Hold on. Okay, mermaid tail teal. You can probably see the difference. This is the bluegrass. It's just a little greener. The mermaid tail's got a little bit more blue. And then the last but not, not, not least is like a cobalt or ultramarine. So the deco art one is okay, but it's kind of thin and funky. I really actually prefer, I said deco art is not my favorite for that one. I love the folk art and the cobalt and the, um, the apple barrel because they're so velvety. I mean, look at that. It's like velvet. It just, and it's very, very matte finish. So in some ways it just sort of sucks in the light in the very best way. Okay. So crap everywhere and I'm trying to decide. I'm going to go for like the teal, the teal blue combo first. And oh, I forgot the white. Okay. Here's some white. So we're going to have some white here because obviously we're going to need to do some mixing. We always do a mix in. Yeah. These are both fun, Sarah. Like I love the, oh, I love the bluegrass. I love the mermaid tail. Mermaid tail is a little bit more versatile. So again, I'm just going to qualify this. I am winging it. Um, I have a sense of what I want to do. We're just going to kind of let it evolve. And we're using our color theory to kind of figure this out. So we've got a couple of basic colors and we want like a medium to large size round. Yeah, because we want this painting part to go. All right, I'm going to start with some basic cobalt blue. I'm going to kind of bring that in, kind of do sort of the outlines here. And I'm not going to worry about the background color right now. I have a sense of what color I'm going to do. I'm thinking like a buttery, creamy yellow, something very simple. Um, but I don't know. But again, that's kind of sometimes you have to think about the background is what's going to be a nice neutral color that works with your new color scheme because sometimes your old color scheme colors don't don't work okay so we got some basic blue sort of popped in there maybe come down the sides a little bit yeah i forgot to draw it over there and the other thing we always always have is something to offload our paint where's my book so if you go to the library and get a whole bunch of old books that nobody loves that are falling apart or are say in german and pass those around and let your painters offload in those and then you have lots of cool mixed media fodder to mess with later how about that now this is a little bit teal for me so i'm going to grab a bit of a bit of yellow here and see what okay so i'm grabbing the mermaid tail i want to lighten it a bit so i'm going to grab some white so right now i kind of have a one-to-one -one mix there actually that's pretty lovely so let's see what happens if we kind of work that in just going to kind of blend in a little bit. Now this teal just kind of tends to pick up that, that cobalt quite a bit. So it depends on how prominent you want it to be. And so every time you brush in there, if you're kind of wet painting, you know, wet on wet paint, you're going to be picking up the paint from, from the canvas. So you have to occasionally kind of re up your mix here just to ensure that it's not getting completely polluted. Okay, so that's a very, very rough start. I've got a lot of pigment on my brush, so I'm going to offload it really fast. And I'm working with a fairly large brush. I think most folks would be comfortable, especially your new painters, with a smaller brush. I'm going big, though, because we're trying to go for speed. And so if you also can get more comfortable with a bigger brush, it allows you to spend less time painting and more time coaching which is really kind of what we do in the paint party business. We coach, we, we're sort of artists. I mean, we are artists, but you know what I'm saying. All right, now I would like to get a little bit more of that mermaid tail in here. So I am gonna grab a smaller brush, What's a good one. Okay, I need a nice cheap Amazon brush. Here we go. There we go, nice cheap Amazon brush right there. I'm gonna grab some just plain old mermaid tail and kind of swoosh it in, maybe right along this edge here blend it swoosh a little and blend you can just kind of make a rule like okay we're going to pick a side and swoosh and blend again we don't worry too much about staying inside the lines or not staying inside the lines and then let's see i'm going to kind of drag drag a little bit of the mermaid tail here in the base with the cobalt as well because it's whoops it's a little bit streaky right now and i want to kind of blend it up okay Okay, I'm going back to the cobalt or ultramarine, whatever you want to call it. 
I use though? I think I'm using the, the folk art right now. I forget to go back and watch the video, video and be like, which bottle did I squeeze? I'll tell you, it's not the deco art. I know that much. Okay. So there, that's kind of a fun, a fun option. You've kind of got those two. And again, they're analogous, right? We sort of picked in this range right in here, this quadrant. So I'm gonna offload my brush. And I love having the opportunity to offload my brush because it means I really have a whole lot less yuck to get in my paint water. In fact, now that I've kind of got most of that off, I'm not even going to fence. So let's do let's do something purpley. Now you could probably use a purple pizzazz or a dioxazine purple. Grab those as samples. I love to make my purple. Well, let's see, what do we got here? So a deep purple, a violet. This is actually not dioxazine. It's Concord grape, apple barrel, whatever. But um, man, that looks blue. It's not blue. But it's a much bluer, darker purple than your basic purple pizzazz. But again, purple pizzazz is one of the few purples that I even like in the deco art collection. And I'm going to grab some of the ultraviolet as well. Again, just using the colors that I like. But I can take some of that guy right there. That's my quinacridone magenta and some mermaid tail teal. And watch what happens when you mix teal and magenta. You get a nice, deep, gorgeous purple. What? Look at that. Whoever thought. But I think I want it just a little bit pinky, purpley, a little less blue. But that's really gorgeous and deep. So I think I will take that one and do this guy here. So I'm going to kind of do the base around the center of the flower. This is a really dark color. A little bit worried about it drying on me. So I'm going to work quickly. So an observation I've made, like in the whole paint shopping thing, Hobby Lobby has some colors, Michaels has other colors. I can only get mermaid tail teal at um, Hobby Lobby. So when I find it, I stock up. And so I'm sorry if you've ever been to Hobby Lobby after me and not been able to find half the colors you like, I buy all of them. Forgot to rinse my big brush, what a silly. All right, here we go. Coming in, coming in, coming in. Oh man, I'm like getting all the feels on this purple one. So notice I was talking about using a larger brush earlier, but I've really stepped down to a smaller brush. I think it's allowing me just a little bit better control in terms of um, applying the color. So now I've got a little bit of teal up in the, up in the ferrule. So I'm just gonna kind of roll the brush in my book. Ooh, that's awfully pretty too. Just to get the excess junk out. Hmm, something just crashed in the background. My cats are up to something. Now I'm going to grab that magenta. So there aren't really any good deco art magentas. I'm going to be honest. Like they just don't, they just don't do it, which is really too bad. Um, but quinacridone is a very intense, highly pigmented color. Um, and so you can get the basic, the Liquitex basics, which, you know, it's like five bucks for four ounces. It's not really all that different from you know, the price of deco art, which is like two bucks for two ounces or two and a half bucks for two ounces. It's a little bit more expensive, but the color intensity is, well, luscious. All the way up to, although please don't use these for paint parties, like the 15 to $20 bottle of golden, which is also gorgeous, but I use this personally. It's super intense. It makes, it makes this other stuff the Liquitex Basics look weak, but this is not weak. This is a phenomenal color. Also, one of my, one of my, my uh, what am I saying? One of my staples. And so if you're looking to get, you know, to kind of educate some of your painters about color um, or really help them get vibrant colors or you're like me and you're totally dissatisfied with most of the pre-bottled colors that are out there, they feel too, too flat and muddy for you. Um, Learn to mix in the CMYK range. And I'm actually working on a little kind of blog post about that, which hopefully I'll be able to get out at some point and some ways to kind of practice and learn, learn how to use the CMYK range. So if you're like CMYK, what's that? Cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is for black. 
not a fan of black most of the time, but whatever. Okay, so see how pretty that is? We're kind of getting the purple and, and the magenta. So now I need to go lighter. So I'm going to, this is my purple. That's a deep purple. It's getting close to dry, but I'm going to grab a big chunk of the magenta and mix it right on top of that. So that's going to kind of purple it a little bit. I'm going to add some white. So it's probably one part magenta to one part white to whatever was left. Mm, I don't love it, but it's okay. Kind of bring that in here and kind of, again, blend it in. I'm not actually really doing a whole lot of blending. I'm just saying, okay, part one, part two, part three. But because I'm working quickly and I'm working on top of wet paints, some of that blending just kind of happens right there on the canvas. This is still pretty dark, so I'll probably come back in with a little bit of, I'm getting muddy there. Come back in with a little bit of white or some other kind of mixed mashed color to kind of blend it. But See how fun that is? You can really get creative with these colors. I know the other thing that we risk while doing this, you know, because again, it's, it's really hard to, to do a sample without having some consideration for composition as well. And because we're going to be doing a handful of color samples, my composition is very chaotic. The background color, we're going to have to go super neutral. So my brain was like, okay, well, the most neutral color we've got out there is a gray. Do I really want to do gray? Eh, maybe not. All right, so some more white, a little bit of credit. Quinacridone magenta. So I'm going to say it's like three parts white to one part quinacridone. And again, I promise I will work on my my little my little painting exercise blog post so you guys can kind of go review that and and learn. Or maybe you're already like a, a color genius and you're like, yep. But a lot of folks struggle with that. So just adding some light points here. And again, is this my best art? Not necessarily. Is it fun? Heck yeah. Is it fully blended? No. Do we care? Hmm, no. Grab a little corner. Okay. All right, sorry. Now I'm getting all, all like, oh, it's not perfect. So I grab some quinacridone and I'm just working it into portions of that of that that white outline just to keep it from being quite so quite so intense. One side is okay, but I don't want the whole thing intense. All right, that'll do. We can stop on that one now. So again, that one on the color on the color quadrant is kind of right in this zone right here. And we've even kind of grabbed into this here. So it's almost like that section. And again, somewhere or other, I don't even know where, but somewhere or other on YouTube, which is like Blue Cat Studio Art or the Blue Cat Studio. I guess the Blue Cat Studio. Um, I've got a whole tutorial on that color wheel. And I think I even have like a little email or where you can get the template for it and print it yourself and actually follow along and make your own color wheel, which is really fun. I mean, sure, you can go buy one, but they never use as good of colors as you can when you're like, this is where my brain is and this is the colors I want. Okay, I need something vibrant and orange and red. So let's start with, what do we want to do? I think this one I want to be, I'll do the reds here and I'll do fiery orangey things over here. So we'll do red, I kind of want to do red, magenta, slightly orange. So kind of this is, if this is my central piece, the red, I'm going to go a little magenta and a little orangey. So of course, you know, we got to use this, our fluorescent red because it's so much more fun. And I'm going to get a little bit more of the quinacridone. Oh, here, let's do something really cool just for fun. And this is, you're going to see immediately why I love daffodil yellow. So, quinacridone magenta, although it's really my coloration. But if you take a little bit of yellow in that quinacridone, a little bit more quinacridone, you can kind of get like a red. How weird is that? I just mixed a red. I know everybody learned that red is a primary color, but in fact, in the CMYK world, red is not a constant color. It's not, um, not a primary color. Okay, so I'm gonna start with some fiery red in this zone and again, kind of doing the base. 
working my way out. You could do a whole lot more of a blendy blend, but I'm not feeling the blendy blend today. I'm just kind of having fun slapping the colors. And I want you to be able to see those colors so that when you look at the sample, you can really kind of like get a sense of what colors I've used. So again, this purple here would be a dioxazine purple if you're looking for one from Deco Art or from, you know, a tube or dark violet or something, or, you know, mix your own, whatever works for you. Okay, so I got my basic red in there. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I'm not gonna do the clinic right now. I'm gonna go get some orange here. Fluorescent red makes the raddest orange. Okay, so I'm gonna take some quinacridone. And again, you can pick your own orange. I just don't like bottle oranges for the most part. They never do it for me. And I added some fluorescent red to that quinacridone, which makes it really, really vibrant. I'm gonna keep going with that fluorescent red. That's gonna give me a fun, a fun warm, hold on fun warm color, a little bit more orangey in there. Okay. So here we go, getting the kind of the red in there, ready orange. So quinacridone and fluorescent orange or fluorescent red also make regular red. It's bananas. Oh, my lighting, you can't even see the difference. Let me see if I can bring this up so you can actually see the difference. No. All right, let's so turn off my light. They're totally different. No, all right. I didn't have to trust the process, my friends. Find a way to photograph it so that it's obvious. And now I'm going to take some of that fluorescent orange over here. Probably not that much, but a bit. And some of my dand or daffodil yellow. Mix them together. Gives me a nice vibrant orange. It's kind of the same as like, say the deco art flame. And then I can kind of take that orange and drag it through here. And again, it is not showing up on cam, but it is definitely, definitely a thing. Now I have to keep grabbing more of the daffodil because every time I swoosh into this fluorescent or red, it is, you know, deepening the pigment that's on my brush. I'll touch this up in a second so you can actually see the difference there. And I'll also get a, a photograph of this when it's done. So you've got a good kind of color sample. So when you're kind of blending on canvas, it's really important to start kind of from the tip, wherever your lightest point is, and then blend into the dark. If you go from the dark to the light, your light section won't ever be as light as you intend it to be. So I'm finding because I have such dark base colors, I'm having to go really much more towards the yellow side of my orange. Oh, but that's fiery and lovely and wonderful and it's making me happy. Okay, so now that we've got that, we have to figure this guy out. We'll do something. I'm gonna rotate things around a little bit. And I think we can go fiery oranges. So I'm gonna just take that kind of tangerine color that I just mixed. Kind of get in in it in here is kind of a base. Veronica, hey, you said yeah, you you caught you caught me in a live. I you know I haven't been live for I hate to say it, but months. Like for some reason, I just went through this whole ultra introverted stage where I was like, I'm just gonna pre-record everything. So hey, I'm very excited to be here. And then we have another person who put a bunch of fire signs. It's this Facebook user. Um, I'm sorry, it's not displaying your name. Otherwise, I'd be like, hey, I probably know you too. Okay, so what could we do? We could do a yellow in here. I'm gonna grab some yellow and I'm just gonna see what happens if I take that straight daffodil yellow and kind of drag it on in. Oh, hi, Sammy. It is good to see you. How's the bobblehead girl going? Oh, no, wait, you're, are you working on that? No, that was um, Sandy, not Sammy. Sorry, my brain's like doing a thing. All right, so bringing that yellow in. 
And again, I'm hoping that this helps you figure out how to kind of do alternate color schemes. You know, what we could do for the background is get completely bananas and do like a striped background where it kind of blends like this way so it's cools to warms. Okay, somebody said, hey girl, good to see you. Half of me's like, that's gotta be Holly, but I don't really know because it says Facebook users. So whoever just said, hey girl, put your name in so I know who you are. I'm using StreamYard, so I am, um, you know, it's it's doing its thing. It's kind of one of its um, weird it is. Oh, hey, we don't have any green. We need some green. I guess I could get the green in here because look at, we're painting a rainbow. This is what we, I always do. I can't even help myself. Um, but let's have fun with some green. We don't have green yet. So I'm gonna rinse my brush finally. Now, if you're not comfortable painting a sample like this straight out, another option you have is to literally, you know, if you have these small canvas panels or even just a sketchbook, you could do kind of some color stripes. Um, and that's a really great way to kind of show your folks, hey, you know, here are two, you know, and they look really nice together or even have like, you know, some, like one time I got like one of those, um, it wasn't a poster board, it's the foam core board because they, they're stiff and they stand up by themselves. And I literally just took one of those and we were doing flowers. I'm like, okay, you could do flowers like this or like this or like this. And it, it'll enable my painters to just go completely, you know, haywire and do their thing. Okay, so we need some green. I think I mean, I'm thinking green and teal. So how do we make green? We take some, some yellow, boop, and some mermaid tail. And I'm gonna say it's probably two parts yellow. Yep, two parts yellow to one part mermaid tail. Two parts yellow to one part teal. Mermaid tail I like because it gives me this gorgeous, gorgeous. Now that's a nice spring green. And I think we'll do that kind of here at the base. So I could have, to, and then this is actually the lighter, so I'm kind of going opposite of our normal because then I'm gonna have the teal coming out and being darker, but I've seen some flowers like that. So now I'll just grab some of that teal here and kind of pull it in. Notice I didn't even bother to rinse my brush. It's kind of going more green than anything, but it's still got that kind of tealy feel. But this is fine because I can always come in and kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, tune it up and tweak it and all those things. I'm going right off the page or the canvas or whatever you'd like to say. All right, here we go. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so that even could just be the green sunflower. I mean, you know, I've seen green flowers from time to time. Why not, right? But again, we're going whimsical. We, we are just spending reality. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of just the, the pure mermaid tail and kind of bring that up in here. Just kind of the tips, snip the tips. Okay. I'm not seeing it right here. Okay, good. All right, I'm loving those colors. So now, middles, what would we do? What will we do? So here's where for the middles, you could go, you could just do the basic brown or black or whatever that's kind of standard. I'm feeling like since we're playing with color, this is our opportunity to, um, to work with a, uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Complimentary, right? So this one is going to have kind of some, some version of red. This one is going to be yellows and oranges. This one's going to be purples and teals. This one is going to be oranges. And again, I'm just using, oh, sorry, I'm just using my color wheel to tell me kind of the opposite of this here is going to be kind of the blue cobalt purple. Now, if you're like, well, I don't really like, you know, that color and that color together, then just kind of go off to the side slightly or even maybe even do a, a, the triadic. And triadic is kind of like the radiation sign, right? Like it would be this one plus the ones that are kind of off the angles from it. Anyways, I've got the whole thing on this that I talk about that ad nauseum extensively. You can paint your own and it's super, super fun. And you can mix it as much as you want. Use 
basics as much as you want. Okay, so I have to look at my color wheel so I know. And what did I say I wanted here? Greens, blues, all right, orangey reds. So I'm going to come in. Let's go for it. Straight up fluorescent red, which is orange, right? That's fine. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that to kind of make it interesting. Ba -ba 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 on canvas mixing because we can. Again, super clashy, but it's fun. And then maybe just for giggles, kind of add some kind of red, red love in here. Just kind of some, oh, that red is hardly showing on cam. Blah. Put some red dots. And I'm just using kind of Tuscan red accents because it's readily available in there. Offloading my brush, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. And we'll let that dry and we'll decide. And you can then, you know, you can come back in and do highlights later. So here, blue, green, whatever. Kind of still in the orange zone, but maybe a little bit more orangey yellow. So I'll start with a yellow in here. as a base, because I can kind of blend into that. Now you could even just leave it with a bright, sunny, happy yellow. And this is the Folk Art Daffodil Yellow. I love it because it's a cool yellow and it mixes really nicely with all the colors. When you use like a warm cadmium color, it really just doesn't, it doesn't cooperate the way we'd like it to. Now I'm grabbing a little bit of my fluorescent red. Again, you could do like the, the orange flame from DecoArt. Or even the one of the you know the pumpkins or jack o' lanterns or whatever the heck they are, um, but again I look at those and they have like a certain level of dullness that makes me crazy. Well, actually, the orange flame is pretty good. Or you could even use a fluorescent orange, but then that's going to get ultra violent and ultra, not violent, um, ultra. What am I trying to say? Loud. Anyways, okay, so that kind of works. We got a good uh, oppositesies here. This one needs to be a greenish tone. You know, I'm actually not rinsing my brush much. So I've got mostly yellow on my brush. I'm just gonna offload it and then come in and make myself a green. So a little touch of mermaid tail, a little bit of yellow. I think I'm gonna keep it kind of a springy yellowy green. Just kind of come in. You don't even have to stick to the colors that you had before. Get some yellow in there as well. So of course our color scheme here is completely suspending belief, right? Like, you know. And if these colors are way too vibrant, like that is totally okay. It is totally okay. Like, you don't have to do this like this, but these are the colors I like. So this makes me happy. And it makes a really fun color sample, right? So see, I'm kind of like, I started with yellow and I've just been working little bits of the kind of mixed green in there and kind of blending it. And because I'm working quickly and all that paint is wet, I can get away with, with doing that now. Just grabbing literally some more of that mermaid tail teal and kind of pulling it through. So if I made that purple with my cyan and my magenta, then I'm making my green with my cyan and my yellow. Again, those are our own weird primaries. Now this one, we've got oranges, reds, and yellows. And so I could be green, I could be blue, I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be not able to sing. So let's do some teal. And I didn't rinse, I still have that yellow on there, so it's gonna help that kind of go a greenish color. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm just going to allow that yellow that's on my brush to kind of work its way off. I know this is called lazy girl painting. And then I'm going to grab some of this cobalt just for fun or ultramarine, whatever you like to call it, and kind of work it around the edge. Whoops. Okay. Well, that one's too good too. Kind of blend it in. And I'm going to grab some more of that. Mermaid tail and blend, blend, blend. I'm sort of losing some of my pretty yellow, but that's okay. That's okay. Bring some yellow back. There. So the cobalt makes it a little bit muddy. 
you can mix a blue with with um, with quinacridone and teal, but it's it's hard to do. All right, so there you kind of got some more opposites. You know, it's not super orangey, but we've got some of that blue there that sort of hints at it. A little bit more teal in there just to kind of make everything talk. I need to offload my brush. Oops. I need to take this guy up before he dies on me, huh? Here, I just bought some green masking tape so I could make huge, crazy paper flowers. So we use the green masking tape to, to shore it up, because why not, right? There you go, on the fly, on the fly fix. Now it works again. Cool. You know, I did lots of interesting things here, but I didn't do all that interesting stuff elsewhere, but that's okay. So now we come over here and I think the verdict for orange and yellow is gonna be kind of the blue purple zone. So I was mostly working in the teal area. So I'm gonna grab some, I'm okay to just kind of grab some blue. And again, you can mix a blue, although it's very hard to get it this rich and vibrant and velvety. So I just, you know, some things you just gotta do. A little bit of green in there, but no biggie. All right, so we'll take some quinacridone and we'll try some of this blue. That's gonna mix really dark. Oh, that's lovely, though. A little bit more quinacridone. Oh, you know, I talked all about doing um, hot pink, and I never used hot pink. Okay, so this guy's coming in very, very dark. Not 100% sure how I feel about that. Like, I want it just a little bit lighter. So I have, well, I feel like I'm throwing a wrench in things if I grab some of this. This is the ultraviolet uh, neon purple, but I'm going to do it anyways because... because. So another way to do that is I could have just grabbed more of the quinacridone, but it's still got a lot of red in it. I think a little bit of white in here too, just to see if we can lighten it up a little. Because these colors don't, I mean, you don't have to do the very darkest version. I mean, I know we actually expect, ooh, that got funky, didn't it? We actually expect the middles of the flowers to be kind of darker. Well, that's interesting. It almost looks like alcohol ink. Let's see if I can add a little bit more cobalt to blend. Again, did I mention I'm winging it? So this is semi-planned out, but we're also thinking our way through on the fly. So if it's not perfect, well, hey, I literally just had a rough idea when I went live and that was it. Because again, the idea is to demonstrate and kind of talk about a methodology for, for thinking your way through color combinations when you get asked those questions by your paint party people. So now if I want to add a little bit of interest to these, um, I'm feeling like this color would be really fun if I just added some kind of fluorescent orange kind of dots, maybe kind of right along here. You don't have to. Again, you could keep this like really much more simple, much more basic, much more standard. That's okay. Who else can, oh, this one's a green color too, so I can probably get some fluorescent orange in there. Although honestly, this fluorescent, excuse me, fluorescent red is going to dry a lot darker, so it's probably not gonna show up quite so well on this green center, but we can still add a few bits, maybe even a swoosh. It's a thing, it's a thing. In fact, this fluorescent red is working out so well. I'm like, well, I could put some in here too. Let's do it. Let's just keep going with a fluorescent red, right? adding some dots. Again, I'm not really even dotting the whole thing. I'm just kind of adding some dots. Kind of gives that sense. Now here, I don't know that I want fluorescent red, but what color would I use? What color would you use? I'm feeling like green. Green is talking to me, but what color is talking to you for the middle here? Let's make a green. Oh, I'm, I'm almost out of this stuff, so let's make something really vibrant and light. 
yellow. So I'm going to say one part mermaid tail to two or three, that's three parts yellow. That's pretty good. I want it almost yellowier. But I don't want to just be like reprising the yellow because I've got a lot of yellow already in this. So I think, okay, this is wet on wet. This is, this may or may not go well, but I'm going to just kind of get some of those in there and kind of do some dots and they're not even perfect. They're kind of lumpy. I'm just taking wet blobs of, of this mushy green paint and just kind of getting it in there. There you go. So you kind of have a sense like, hey, if people want to miss, mess it up, not mess it up, mix it up. There we go. Sometimes I can't articulate my own thoughts. And this one here, this was the early one. I have some red dots in there, but it's kind of a yellowy orange background plus green. So I might just throw a couple of these green dots in here for contrast. Eh, it only sort of works. That's okay though. That's okay though. We don't have to be perfect. Look at all these lovely colors we're using. Lovely colors. Okay, so I'm gonna offload that. Hola. Hi darling, I'm 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 live. How are you? Thank you. Okay, now I have to figure out the background. Ah, okay, so honestly, a black background would look amazing on this or a simple gray. I'm kind of feeling like black would be the one. I don't like, I don't like black. And I know I talked about stripes, but I'm feeling like right now, if we try to do stripes on this, mm, y'all would just kill me. And so all these little swirly bits and whatnot, I think we will do in white or gold, ooh, gold or something else. Okay, so black is kind of the, the killer of all color. So I can put it anywhere. I just plopped it on top of some of my dark, uh, my, um, my dry paints. I'm going to grab this bigger brush and I'm not going to get quite up to the edges. I'm just going to get close. I'm going to fill in the big gaps first and then we'll come back in and do the edges. So when you're doing a paint party, if you teach paint parties, this is a great tip to give your, um, your painters because, you know, otherwise they'll sit there and be super meticulous, like trying to get right here inside of all this zone. And like the rest of the painting won't even be anywhere near finished. And so generally I'm like, I like to recommend that people get like the bulk of it done and then just come back in and tidy it up with a smaller brush. Because especially towards the point where you're doing this part, you're tired, they're tired. Yeah. They've already taken quite a long time to get it done. And they just want to really feel like they've had some progress. Um, I don't necessarily recommend doing this on a on a black canvas, you could, but then you've got a much bigger kind of battle. I like to call it an uphill battle because getting it this vibrant means lots and lots and lots of white base painting. And so I think it's, you know, just as effective to kind of work against the white canvas first and then come back in and just add the black. So again, big strokes, you notice I'm leaving lots of white gaps. That's generally the end. Antithesis of what I like, but this is how we get it done quickly. Oops, sorry, my corner. So I know I was like, yeah, a nice light background that's neutral, but honestly, with all this color, black is truly going to be the most interesting and it's going to provide the greatest contrast to all these. So the other reason that I'm suggesting black is that many of these are kind of similar values and value is how dark or how light it is. I mean, the yellow is a different value, it's lighter, but a lot of these are kind of in the mid range. And so unless we went with a very, very light neutral background, like an ultra light gray, which probably wouldn't do a lot of these colors any favor or a black, it would feel very muddy. And so that's why I'm, I'm choosing the black, right? Because these colors pop. Now granted, most people aren't gonna be doing like a million and one colors on it. Although I don't know, maybe you are. Maybe this is such a fun one that we should like release this design 
uh, for license to my inner circle members. I would love to know what you guys think. Although honestly, now that I'm doing it, my inner circle members, because they see it, they immediately have access to teach this and make money off it. If you are not one of my members, you are welcome to do this for fun, but um, you cannot uh, make money off it unless you are a part of the membership. Just saying. All right. I've just about come to the end of my ability to use the big brush. I want to touch this. I want to get black paint on my fingers. Oh my gosh. Oh, and the blue cat inner circle is currently open. Um, I'm, I keep meaning to close it, but you know, I'm still learning how to use my website and it kind of hadn't made any announcements about it closing. So, um, it's still open, but I'm thinking I'm probably going to close it by Friday. What day is it? It's Wednesday. I'll close it by Sunday. Because, you know, I have to figure out how to close it on my website. I know that's silly. It used to be PayPal. I could just turn it off. Be like, okay, it's no longer available. But now that I'm like doing this whole new thing. I'm good at painting, but I'm not so good at technology. That's all I got to say. I'm learning the technology part. Okay. I'm floating this black. Why? Because all that black pigment is going to utterly change the color of my rinse water. And I just don't want black paint water yet. I want to rinse it. It didn't change it that much. I already had dark kind of turquoise teal, whatever going on in there. Okay. So again, just logistically here, moving things around, drying that guy off. I'm going to have to wash him later. Coming back to my cheapy, cheapy, cheapy Amazon brush. And I'm going to kind of come in and just get like the little, the little bits and kind of do a little outlining on these guys if you like to tune the shapes. I used to be all about the liner brushes and sending them in my kits, but now I'm like, okay, we can simplify things here and just kind of learn how to make small lines with these small to medium sized brushes. This one would be really fun for like a, a girl's room or any sunflower lover, you know. Wasn't ready for sunflowers yet. I thought sunflowers were like a summer thing, but we're doing sunflowers in February. But then again, you know, I did snow today, but honestly, like, I feel like we kind of skipped winter. It feels like spring already, and my brain's like in spring mode. So sure, why not? Let's get into summer mode. If we do Christmas in July, can we do summer in February? Is that allowed? I don't really know. You tell me what you think, guys. Let's see here. Again, just kind of going around the edges, tuning it up. I need to add some more black to my canvas. So, um, you know, something I didn't really mention earlier, but um, I used Sharpie to outline this thing for two reasons. One, um, it shows up much better on video. And a majority of my business is actually, you know, creating designs and filming them and, and posting them online and creating tutorials for other artists to use um, in their paint parties, etc. cetera. Um, so it is really important that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So the Sharpie is good there. But also, um, I feel like even just for paint parties, you know, people tend to paint over stuff and then lose track of where the lines are. And so if I put those Sharpie lines in there, it's much easier in the long run to kind of see where the design is. Um, and in general, it's pretty easy to cover, cover that up when it's time. All right, I'm gonna pretty this guy up right here. Okay, well, it works. I'm sure we can do some, some, some more details with the black in a minute. I just need to get the, the base color done. Oops. Brush went wide and changed the shape of my, my petal. So again, as I'm doing this, if you guys have questions, whether you see me live or you're catching the replay, perfectly okay to, you know, just ask your questions in the comments. And if, if I'm live, I'll address them live. And if I'm not live, I will come back to you when I see your comment. I'll give you a written answer versus a verbal answer. And somebody says Facebook user. I don't know who you are, but thank you. It says stunning colors. Thank you, thank you. I'll definitely say colors are 
colors are my language. It's kind of my specialty. Uh, so if you are interested in learning how to work with crazy colors and get more comfortable in the range and getting, I don't want to say getting weird, but getting weird, being vibrant and, you know, the, 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 it feels like the trend like in, clo in clothes and everything, or at least for the last few years has been these sort of mute, muted, neutral, chill colors. And that's not my thing. So if that's not your thing either, then we might be each other's thing. Just saying. But if you like really prefer the neutrals and the pastels and the pale colors, chances are you're looking at this going, oh my God, that's so gaudy. Not for me. And that's okay. Because there are plenty of people out there doing all the things. But I like to think I offer that insane colors option. Oh, we've got some white gaps over here on the side. I'm just going to smush them up. Again, my, the sides of my canvas are not my best today. If you see any little like kind of white, white bits, empty canvas, just get in there with your black. Let's see. I'm so afraid I'm just going to put my wrist in this. So I'm also um, in the process of launching a mixed media course. Some of you have seen the uh, bubble head, the bubble hair don't care girl, I'm figuring out how to package her up as an individual a la carte mixed media class. Um, those are really better online than in person simply because there's, you know, it takes me almost two hours to do. Um, so it's a very time materials intensive project. Um, so those are really kind of great for, for online stuff. Um, so if you're like, well, you know, I don't really do paint parties and, you know, I just occasionally want to do a design um, or, you know, hey, I'm really trying to get more comfortable in mixed media. It's not something I've done a lot with. And um, that you know, bubble hair don't care girl might be a really, really fun project for you. But if, if you're in the inner circle already, you have full access to pretty much everything I do. And that's already live. And everything. Well, so. Yeah, I haven't released the the, the one-off tutorial, but I'm getting there. I am getting there. I think I should be able to release it by tomorrow. And again, that's mostly me figuring out the technology. And it's going to be on my website, thebluecatstudio.com. Brand new website. You can also read a little bit more about the membership. If you, are, if you do teach paint parties or even have your own online business where you um, have like a painting membership, as long as you are selling to end user painters, uh, the inner circle, you can use my designs online to teach and make money. You can do time lapses of my stuff and get monetized on your reels, all the good things. So if you're just looking for more content that you need to use, you are, as an inner circle member, welcome to use mine. That's actually the whole point. So we've got a library of something like, I don't know, like a hundred, a hundred projects. You know, some of them are going to be really paint party friendly. Some of them are going to be more kind of aimed at, you know, letting you play around and, and learn some new techniques. Got a whole series on composition, got a series on color, color theory. I think the whole section, the whole thing it was, it was a tech Tuesday or technique Tuesday series I did about a year ago. And then for Christmas, we have a whole advent ornament challenge for a lot of that currently is on YouTube, but I don't know how long it's going to be publicly on YouTube. So get it while it is good. All right, we're getting there, you guys. But you see how much like you can start to really envision what's going on when you when you do the big parts first, because you know this just looks like something I need to tweak. But if I was you know spending all my time tweaking it and you walked away and then came back and I was still spending all my time tweaking it and had all this white stuff, you'd be like, oh my gosh, what did she even get done? So alternately, you know, you could also go ahead and just outline the heck out of these things with a smaller brush first. But I love that feeling of like making progress. So that's why I'm always an advocate for starting with a big brush and then graduating down. So it gives you a little bit more instant gratification and sense of accomplishment. 
And so if someone has ADHD and, you know, with attention issues like myself, gets the instant gratification, guaranteed your painters are also going to be like happier that way. And you too. All right. Got a gap over here on the side. And my side sort of worked, sort of didn't work. I forgot to paint some of the petals, but it doesn't matter because it's just the side of the canvas. And as long as it sort of looks like it makes sense, it doesn't have to perfectly make sense. And as long as it's not like all white, we're good. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole on that. I could totally go down the rabbit hole on that, but I'm sure that would be like super boring to watch. And if you're like me and you're like, okay, I would really like to just watch this in the 30 second version. Oh, you know, hang tight. I'll have a reel out in an hour or so where you can watch the whole thing in 30 seconds, but you don't get the commentary. So again, these brushes I'm using right now, this one's just a cheap, you know, little brush I buy in bulk on Amazon. Um, you know, and often include them in paint kits. And while I'm like, oh yeah, it's cheap. I love them. I mean, I use them in a lot of my videos and a lot of my projects and paint parties because, you know, they're kind of really nice workhorses. And if they get wrecked, I'm not worried about it. Because many of you know, if you teach paint parties, um, Painters tend to forget to respect the materials, you know, because they don't belong to them. They tend to, you know, mash them and leave them, you know, full of paint sitting on the table. And while it's nice to remind people to be respectful of your stuff, sometimes that doesn't come off quite right. So if you just don't use your very best stuff, then, you know, the cost of doing business and people wrecking your stuff is... Significantly less. I don't know. It's a thing. But also these ones tend to be, they work really well too. I mean, that's the other thing is, you know, they kind of can, you can, one of my favorite things to do with these is get them like all flat and then use them. Oh, can you see that? Oh, hey there, Melinda. She says, so pretty. Thank you. Kind of get, get it flat and you can kind of use it to create like a, a better line. Oops. I feel like we're pretty close. And I think like the real point of this video was to talk about color schemes and different alternatives to your standard sunflower. If you want, if you, again, we had somebody who was asking, well, hey, you know, I've got, you know, a user or a, not a user, a, that's me, my IT person talking about a user. I've got a painter who's really interested in doing their own thing and using different colors. But I don't know what kind of colors to suggest for them. You know, what would you do? How would you do it? And so this is just kind of a, showing you a way to kind of figure it out and maybe some color color combo samples. So next up, I'm going to take some white because we need highlights, right? We totally need highlights. We'll do maybe a couple of highlights kind of in this. Ugh. Got a little bit dried up. It's a little thick. I like the deco art white better than the folk art white, but apparently I just have the deco, the folk art white right now. I'm gonna do a couple of pieces in here, maybe a little swoosh along the side to kind of give the give the petals a little little zhuzh. I think I got the word zhuzh from queer eye for the straight guy when they're talking about hairdos, but whatever. We can queer eye this guy, right? All right, that's fun. Now this paint has gotten gooky. It's not quite as flowy as I'd like it to be. I do like it when my paints have a little bit more of a liquidy kind of feel, but that's all right. So a few little highlights here. Could even do some of those in yellow if you wanted. We'll see, I'm gonna get the white going first. And if I don't like it, I can always come over it with like a bright yellow. I 
couple little bits in here. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. I was just kind of following like a general pattern for this. Oh, and you know what we really need in here? We need a couple of little dots in here to kind of lighten it up too. Again, if you're not loving the white, you can always come in and tweak that to a different color, but the white makes a good base. And so I could do kind of a, a wash over that, like a yellow wash. This one could be like a really pale blue or even a, um, what's the color I'm thinking of? What's the color I'm thinking of? We use it all the time. Bahama. Bahama's a, Bahama's a fave. Now, you might be noticing that I have highlights on this side and then highlights on this side. Oftentimes I stick to a rule where, you know, the highlights are generally either only on the right or only on the left. But because this is kind of a radial design and the right and left of each petal tends to change, um, I'm kind of picking a rule where sort of this portion of each piece is on the left and this portion of each piece is kind of on the right. I don't know. Again, it makes sense in my head. Maybe it doesn't make sense in reality, but I'm hoping that it at least looks okay and kind of, kind of jives. I think a few little light dots in here. Oh my gosh, I've been going for a whole hour. This was meant to be like a quickie, but you know, you could never do a quickie when you're playing with this much color. Okay, so we'll add all right, highlights. I don't want to do this one. I don't even know. Come on, Wendy. All right, here we go. I'll kind of pick my roll. And then I'm going to presto change it over here. if it makes sense but it, it looks it works i love those little highlight i'm going to change it again so the highlights help kind of point out the flower do a couple of little dots in here again to kind of keep filling it out giving you a little bit more interest brush is covered in paint it's gooky so again we break out break out the book some rando german book that my organizer got from helping out one of her other clients and she I was like oh look at all those books she's like you want them I'm like heck yeah I do so here's a trick for these cheeky brushes I love you can kind of take it and smush it it gives you that's too much paint kind of gives you a flattish almost blade like look kind of just create like little blade bits in here helps you get a finer line if you turn it kind of sideways. I guess you could also use a bright brush or a flat brush or square brush, whatever you want to call it. That's all the same. But I'm all about like the one brush wonder. Almost there. This is really fun. Holy cow. Can I have a sundress with this out with this with these design on it, please? Oh, I don't like that. Cruddy duddy. All right. That's okay. This brush might, in fact, be a little bit big for this little tiny guy. I'm going to have to be kind of strategic. Like minimize the paint on this. And, you know, with every stroke in my, every time I get in the palette, I'm going to work to flatten it. little part of this a little bit harder again I have to keep smushing it into kind of a flatten a flatten shape to get those finer lines and maybe a few a few white dots in here to kind of pop things around that's fun did I forget oh, this guy didn't get any white dots he needs some white dots doesn't he here we go we'll do some right kind of right in this zone here giving it like little freckles. Why not? Uh-oh. 
My cat's stuck outside and yowling. Okay, well, hey, look at that. We got it done. I'm going to run off, open the door, let the cat in, and be right back. Actually, or can I just be done? I think we're, oh, my gosh, I missed a slot. Hey, Mama, can you check and see if Nugget's at the door wanting to come in? Look at this, I forgot this guy already. Perfect. Well, that was super fun. Let me know if you have any questions, and um, yeah. You don't even need a tracer for this. You can just do it. Thank you for watching and joining me. I hope you had fun. These are all the awesome colors that we got. Um, and I'll see if I can't put something together that makes more sense. Love you guys. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.